That's what I said. He yeah. said one of his biggest mottos was, go and check don't it out. believe me, go and check it out yourself. But you can't go and check it out with the people that are putting that information out. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, for example, so, so they will give sermons or give information and do videos or whatever, mm -hmm. but they don't put themselves out for the world to question them. Because if they some did... Do. Some do. Like who? The lady that I showed to you. Okay, so... So have you questioned so instance, or asked instance, her these questions for, you're asking instance, me? Say for instance, I yeah. found her information was superior for some, for some yeah. reason, right? Which you're never going to find. Exactly. But I'm not going to follow her. Do you get my point? I'm yeah, not, but I'm, that, I'm that, not that, saying that's, don't... That's, listen, yeah. we say read and study everything. You, you should. That's what I do. Right. But the point is, there, there has to be a conclusion to that, right? Of course. So what's the conclusion? This is where I'm trying to get to. My... Okay. Yeah. Awareness. Now... Okay. This is this is my this is what I say about awareness. Your level of awareness governs your decision making processes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So your level of awareness governs your decision making. So for me, if yeah. I'm driving and my phone rings and I yeah. grab my phone and I answer my phone, am I fully aware? I'm not fully aware. I'm but that's the difference. My, my awareness, yeah. my awareness has been compromised. Right. Yeah. So what can happen? I could hit somebody. That's why I keep saying you're in doubt. Because if you if you need someone like that's what I'm saying the difference yeah. between us and everyone else right. we don't have that problem because mm -hmm. we know exactly where we stand mm -hmm. regardless of what anyone is saying out there mm -hmm. and and we did what you did to get to where we are because right. I did what you were doing right. many years ago right. so much so that it got to a point where there's nobody out there by way of their qualification mm -hmm. by way of the things they've done. The, like, the, like you said, the receipts. Mm -hmm. what, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. What have they done? What have they delivered? Mm -hmm. And when you start to compare, there is a clear winner mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in our case. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're like, if there's a clear winner, why am I, why am I, like, why am I taking the remix or a watered down version or some angle that, all right, sounds great, mm -hmm. but I, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if I'm not going to come and follow you, because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't see you as the person that is the answer mm -hmm. for humanity, mm -hmm. then then it's like, well, nice to meet you, mate, mm -hmm. or woman, whoever, great, Farrah Khan, whoever you are. Yeah. Like, on the level of where Dr. York is, people say that because when they can't contend with the fact that he is who he is, mm -hmm then it, it can become an ego thing because their ego gets a little bit crushed. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, he thinks he's this. He th but he's like, I've been sent here to do a job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who you are. I've got a quick question. Mm. Um, You're asking the wrong questions. And how do I know that? <laughs> I, because you know what, yeah? yeah go on. The real thing, the real answer that you want is... Okay, let me go back. You're there sitting down as a physical being, mm -hmm. but you're made up of different beings. And the different beings within you are seeking certain answers, mm -hmm. right? So I could go as far as saying your soul is seeking particular answers. Mm -hmm. And you can have a conflict between your physical body and the real you. Because remember, as we say, yeah, <laughs> let me do this. Right, so I'm going to go... If I asked you, what is Wu Sabat? What would you say? Um, sound right reasoning. I could have told you you were going to say that answer before you said it, going back to what I'm saying, that the master teacher, partner by the unknown Dr. Malachi Z. York, came on the scene wanting to teach us Wu Sabat. But what we did is we started to ask questions about religion and other things, yeah? So he kind of put it away. Now, today... The answer for what is Wu Sabat is the future. That's what Wu Sabat is. Wu Sabat is the future. And the people that practice Wu Sabat are the new teachers because we have to clarify and clear up all the mess that we've been given for the last 6,000 years by different people who profess to know. Yeah? That's the word professor. I'm a professor. Professor is one of the highest academic achievements you can have. Right. But it just means I profess to know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you really know. Mm -hmm. right? So now when we start breaking down Wu Sabat, you have 
two sides, yeah? Nine ether, yeah? Which, when we say nine ether, yeah? We're saying nine to the ninth power of nine. There's nothing higher, right? Nine ether itself, because we're dealing with science, as you were saying, mathematics is science. When we start to go into real knowledge, because to know, yeah, it's not to believe. To believe, yeah, whether you spell it with the, you know, belief, as in, yeah, you still see the word lie right there. Whereas no is the first part of what? The word knowledge. knowledge. Yeah? Technology. Yeah. To know. Everyone would rather know than to believe. Mm -hmm. If they're serious about elevating and actually knowing the facts about the universe, about their being and so on and so forth. Because someone can set you on the wrong path by you just believing. I can say, you can ask me the directions and I go, oh, is that way? Turn left, turn right, go there, go there. But I know that I don't know where you want to go. Whereas when you know something, you've got confidence. You can stand up and defend it with your entire life because you know, yeah? Now, when you start dealing with nine EFA, the other side, like I said, is six EFA. Now, there are different ethers. So we can go from like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you get to number nine. Again, nine, because nine is the highest number, nine to the nine power of nine. So if you look at six ether as being, let's say this was a glass, yeah? And this was another glass. You can only fill up the glass to, to where it can reach, which is six ether can only go up to there. Limited but you, capacity. you still got, with nine ether, you still got more. So it's not the fault of six ether beings that they're only six ether. It's like once you get to that stage, that's your limit. So when we say, if you look at these two sides, right? So we can go, here they will say, have faith, F-I-T-H. But on the nine ether side, right. we will say, no, we will say, but we'll come to that one you just said. We will say, you've just confused me because I'm, I'm writing what you said now, but I've got to be uh, a bit more disciplined with my writing because I speak fast and my brain's trying to catch up. Right, we would say fate. Uh -huh. Yeah? Now, if you've been brought up all your life on the six ether side, you're not going to be able to distinguish the difference with this. So again, like I said before in many videos, they will say ghost on this side. We will say spirit on this side. Yeah? So we can keep doing this all the way. As you said, what did you just say? Facts, yeah? Again, knowledge or facts. Yeah? And again, FAC is the tones, yeah? Which deals with music and tones and vibrations and frequency. But we deal with facts, whereas here you can deal with, you can guess. Guess. Nobody wants to live their life on this side. So as we keep doing this, we can go into the different aspects of nine ether versus six ether. And so for 6,000 years, yeah, 6,000 years, remember that if, if you've only been around for a certain amount of time, now, most of the religious world, Right, because when you look at information and you say, how did everything start? Right, where does everything come from? Who's like the beginning? Because people like their, a lot of humans are like, you know, fascinated with the beginning. What was at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we say, you've got three kind of angles, yeah? Right? You've got the religious people that are going to give you a character called God, Allah, this deity that is responsible for everything. So that's, that's one way, yeah? Then you're going to have, what? The scientific community. So this side, six ether is religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, religion. We can, again, and here we deal with science. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Science or sciences. Mm -hmm. So 
each side will always show you which one is superior. Yeah? So now, you say uni, uni deals with one, right? Because you have to start somewhere, as I said, where did the beginning start? And then things spiral outward. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to go too far so, so that you can kind of get your question. So what was your original question? Um, my original question um, is Yahweh um, of the Bible, is he one of the Anunnaki beings, Enki or Enlil? Yeah, exactly. So again, when you're dealing with these beings on, on this side, right, like you said, yeah, but again, remember, language, language is one of the ways that six ether holds you down. Because when you say Yahweh, well, where did that come from? Where, where did you first come across this? Um, I think originally it didn't have vowels, so it was the YHWH. No, but I'm saying, where did you come across this word? Well, they introduced it to us. Where? How? Um, in the book, in the Bible. Right, yeah. okay, in the book. Okay, this is, a, this is another problem. Right. Books are written by men. Mm. Yeah? So who named God, God? Because if you didn't come across it in a book, and this is Islam, Christianity, Judaism, they've all got books, and they only go back 6,000 years. Whereas the scientists, the scientific world, right, the scientists, they tell you that we've been here for how long? From hundreds of thousands of years. Even millions? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, because... In our, in our book, we put it together, yeah, giving you the dates of um, the different findings, yeah? So, okay, here you go. Yeah, we go back to 7 point something billion years. I mean, in terms of what's been found, millions, millions and millions of years. Mm -hmm. So, and this is scientists. So what I'm saying is, do you believe what the religious books say about this character creating everything in six days and then having to rest on the seventh day? Or do you believe the evidence that's been found by scientists that they've carbon dated, mm -hmm. that goes on for millions of years? Mm -hmm. um, I would say 60, 40. 60 in the region of science and probably 40 in religion. I think religion does have some truth to it, but they need need to be expanded upon. And I feel like science does that. I can give you an example. Right, so um, science is the better Science version. is the better option. I'll give you an example. Yeah. You know, when we get to the books of the Bible and it says, um, you know, God says, let us create them in our image. We all know that the word was Elohim. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't you God. say we all know. We all didn't know we that. We all didn't know. That's true. Until certain people came. And revealed that to especially us. Especially Dr. York, Dr. because he was exactly. very... You know what I mean? Clear in terms... Uh -huh. But that's why I said, going back to the Yahweh thing. And this means, what, Yah, which is agreeable, yeah? Or good. People, people say good and bad, yeah? Mm -hmm. But it's not really good and bad. Does yeah? this go to the... Okay. okay. Because good and bad is subjective. Mm -hmm. So when, to answer your original question, that was, as you say, Enki. Or one of the Anunnaki, because this is just a title. And I heard that it's a uh, plural. Yeah, there was Yahwehans. Yeah, that's right. They, they're all plural. Right, okay. This is why when you just said about, in the Bible it says, let us make man in our image, you have to say, who's the us? Who's talking? And the plur plurality is where, like you said about, you can go to another word, Elo. I mean, we break this down all the time, but... Mm -hmm. But the question still remains that you've been lied to, fooled mm -hmm. for the last 6,000 years with misinformation, mm -hmm. with wrong knowledge. Go ahead. Yeah, just, just to build on the point you're making, um, I read somewhere that El mm -hmm. preceded Yahweh. And it even says, I think, in the Ugaritic text that El or Yahweh was one of the many sons of El. So Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. Because yeah. when you start looking at the... The language and the words, these are titles that many beings have held. Even like we've explained about Anu, right? There are many Anus, but Anu is the highest seat 
of the Sumerian doctrine. And when you talk about Anunnaki, that's what you're talking about, Enlil and Enki. But why, why are the Anunnaki so important to people? Because the books of the Bible have come from those stories. Know, yeah. yeah, because the Enuma Elish, right? Let me, some of these things I have to write down, um, that it, like, so people can research it. A lot of people may never have even, I need, uh, let me make some space. Like, a lot of people may never have even come across these words, Enuma. Elish, Epics of Gilgamesh. Yeah, Epics of Gilgamesh, yeah. Uh, there, there's so many, yeah. yeah? Epics, and who, then who is Gilgamesh? You have to start going, Epics of Gilgamesh, yeah? But if you're just stuck in religion and believe that this, what you've been given for the last 6,000 years through these books is correct, then you're lost and you're going to be confused. And all those books have expired because they were actually given an expiry date. You know, like if you go to the shop and you buy something, and you put it in the fridge. After a certain period of time, it's not relevant. Yeah. It's not relevant mm -hmm. And it's even going to be harmful to you if That's you true. still eat it, because it's true. got a date that it says this has now expired. Mm -hmm. These books have expired. There's nothing in those books. Even the fact that they were plagiarized or copied from these other tablets, Enuma Elish, Gilgamesh Epics, Atrahasis, etc., etc., they were still watered down even at that stage, because they're copies of copies of copies. But now it's got to the point where they've expired, meaning there's nothing in those books that will be relevant to today. Even what people consider to be miracles in those books, magicians have been able to do. David Blaine and these guys have done the it's, it's illusions. They're called illusionists, walking on water and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. The rest of it is alchemy, when you can transform things, base metals, or, you know what I mean, like when you start to deal with DNA and, so, and stuff like that. So, but yeah, let's get your questions because I think the questions lead you to the answers and the more answers you have, like you were saying, the more informed decisions you can make about your life because where is all this, this Bible and religious stuff leading you? Anyone who's teaching religion in this day and time, it's going to fade away doesn't matter who you are, because the foundation is weak. And if the foundation is weak, then why would you build your house on top of the on a weak foundation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, now that you've explained that um, Yahweh is either, you know, Enki or Enlil, mm. um, in the Muslim Quran, yeah. um, the most high God in that book is Allah. Mm. Is Allah the equivalent to Enki or Enlil, and the reason why I ask is um, because in Surah 53, yeah. it's called An Najm, mm -hmm. and that translates as the star. And yeah. there's a verse in that chapter where it says, um, I am Allah, Lord of the mighty star Sirius, and right. it was me that destroyed the people of Ad, yeah. the people of Tamud, mm. and the people of Noah before because they were evil and unjust. Yeah. So my thing is, I'm trying to understand, he, 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 sing, he hasn't said I'm the God of the universe, he mm -hmm. hasn't said I'm the God of this galaxy, he said, particular place yeah serious, because system. yeah because the quran is a worse version of the bible meaning that it's only the, it's the youngest of them all right the quran's only 1400 years old yeah this is scholars in islam will tell you this yeah and when you start to oppress them they will have to go back to books that were before because they will say, if you put a, a Muslim in a corner about the Quran being only 1400 years old, they will say, no, nah, it's from the beginning, from Adam, right? Mm -hmm. And they try and go back. So you are like, okay, but if it came with Muhammad, because the angel Jibril or Gabriel came to Muhammad and revealed it to him mm -hmm. in that period of time, mm -hmm. how is it that it's before then? Because the Quran tells you in the Quran, if you're ever in doubt, to go back to that which was before. And that which was before would be the Torah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah? And then we go to the Torah. The Torah goes back to these Gilgamesh epics, epics. and the Numa Elish, the Sumerian tablets. Yeah. So this is where the confusion comes in because Muslims believe that they're correct and what they're saying is right and exact mm -hmm. and their book is the only book everyone should listen to and follow. Dogma. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the Christians do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. 
which is the new Christians, right? Because they say a New Testament, right? And, but they tell you God's words are infallible. So how can you renew a book that is written by God? So the New Testament is the next youngest one, which is only 2,000 years old. And then when you read that, each one of the Gospels, they're telling you an incident that took place, that they supposedly all witnessed, but everybody gives you a different account, different information, and it's incorrect. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the Torah, which is 4,004 you know, 4, years ago. All of them together is 6,000 years old. So when you're saying these characters in the, in the books, Yahweh, Elohim, Adonai, El Shad, you, when you start breaking the words down and breaking each one down, you realize that they're different beings doing different things at different time. Sometimes, okay, it's like in Islam, the name Isa, right? How many people have that name in Islam? Loads. Loads of people. Yeah. So if somebody was writing a story and their name was Isa, and another person wrote a story and their name is Isa, and there's so many people writing a story, and then you, uh, you uh, put them together in a book, now you're going to be lost. Which Isa is exactly. doing what? So when you're saying Yahweh, Elohim, like, it's like, who are we Which talking ones? about? Right, yeah, so yeah. then when we go real deep down, it's really about Anu and his family. Yeah. With Enlil and Enki being the two sons, you've got Arushkigal, you've got Nagal, you've got many people doing different things. Nana. Nana, yeah. et cetera. It's the family. Ninata, yeah. yeah. In, in, yeah Ninata, et cetera, et cetera. And in different cultures, the same names... Mm are given different titles. So who is the Lord of Sirius in the Quran? Who is that? Wh which quote are you... Uh, Surah 53 and Najim, where he says... Right, that's what I'm Lord. saying. Yeah. The <laughs> Lord is the, the Lord translates as Yahweh, which would be back to the Enki and Endil. Mm. But like I said, I don't have my yeah, Quran yeah, yeah, with me. Yeah. But that's why we put this together because it clarifies a lot of the information in a very... like We try to make this a very kind of like compact but with a lot of information, which gets you all this cleared up in your mind, in your head, the dates, the times, the language, etc., mm -hmm. so that you can now be in a position where you can study and take it further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because these books and these religions have expired. Mm -hmm. It's all about Wu Sabat now, because Wu Sabat is the future. Mm -hmm. And whether you accept it or not, it doesn't matter, because the facts are the facts. And you will see what lasts or what has lasted mm -hmm. in all the time that Dr. York has been teaching. Mm -hmm. And he's published more books than anybody else on every subject or all the questions that people have asked. Mm -hmm. And so for us, there are different people at different levels or different stages. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say, if you're still in the stage of believing, that's fine because to believe just means you believe in something. Mm -hmm. And in religion, they will tell you we're the believers. Mm -hmm. Islam says we're believers, have faith, have faith <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but we say faith because right. faith is based on a process that natural nature would happen whether you like it or not. Mm. Let me give you an example. You know what gas is, right? Yeah. What, what, how does gas react to a fire or to a light? It can have different reactions. Okay, give me one. Um, it may aggravate the fire. You'll be nice. Like we could blow up this room. Yeah, if there yeah, was, yeah, if, yeah, remember yeah. when you're at home, if you right. turn, if you leave your gas on your fire, mm -hmm. and gas is in the whole house, yeah. and you come in and light a match, we'll blow up the place. Yeah. We'll blow up the place. Yeah, yeah. That's got nothing to do with religion. That's got to do with natural nature and how elements and gases will work when they're placed with other things. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're saying. Like when you say fate. You're saying, if the conditions are correct, mm -hmm. this will be the outcome. Connected to science. Science, yeah, I'm yeah. So if gas is filled in this room and you light a match, mm -hmm. whether you're Muslim, Muhammad, Jesus, Christ, believer, all of that, if we're all in this room and the place blows up, it's going to affect everyone. Black, white, yellow, green, doesn't matter. Faith is, believe me and just accept what I say to you. Mm -hmm. Because you say to somebody... Would you have faith to close your eyes and cross the road on a very busy motorway? No. Why not? That's what faith is about. Have, mm -hmm. Believe God is going to make sure you get from one side of the road to the other side. Mm -hmm. Close your eyes and walk <laughs> across the road. 
have faith. Yeah. Most people wouldn't do that because that goes, it's not reasoning. It's not making sense. You could try. Maybe one or two might make it, but the chances are they're not going to make it. Whereas fate, we like, if you throw this pen up, okay. it's going to come down. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah? There are, there are natural laws mm -hmm. in nature that work, and we deal with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah? So, yeah, these gods of the Bible and Quran, for years people were fooled by them because it was based on you having faith and believing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the people that pushed it were a lot of the times meant to control people mm -hmm. and control society. And now people have grown past those because you, you're, you're limited because you're going to never get past six ether when you're dealing with religions. Mm -hmm. I think another thing that kind of um, pricked my spider senses, for lack of a better term, mm. was um, one of the books that they left out of the 66 canon was called the Book of the Wars of the Lord. Yes. Now, for me, just the title of that book alone had me thinking. You said he left out. Who left no, out? No, they left out. Who was the they? Well, they is... Uh, this is important is it, is because... It, I think it's the, is it the Council of Nicaea? The Nicaea Council, yeah, right. Nicaea Council. Right, so because there are people... It's strategic. ...that are doing these things. 100%. But we forget when we say they, the oh, they, they did this, they oh, did that. But we have to put are. the spotlight on who these people are. Yep. Yeah, but go ahead. The Nicaea Council, um, who put the Bible together, yeah. selected particular books to go in it, mm -hmm. And left out many books, the Book of Wars, as you've mentioned, yeah. the Book of Generations. There are yeah. many books that book are not Jubilees, in the Bible. Book of, book of Giants, Jubilees, exactly. Book of Enoch. And books I think, of Enoch. Yeah, so I Ple feel like some of these books would have given the average human being a better understanding of what's really going That's on. That's why they were planet. taken out. That's because when, when out. you put them together, it's yeah. like if you're watching a movie, imagine I pulled out certain scenes out of the movie and you're watching, you're like, it jumps from one to the next bit, and you're like, it doesn't add up. So is there some sort of law that exists where, quote-unquote, they have to tell the truth? Because the, I get the, the truth is there. The, the, yeah. it, that's what I'm saying to yeah. you. The way they do it is by people's ignorance. People get told to fall under disbelief. Because when you start to reason and talk to somebody, and they just say, you must believe. And I say, why do I need to believe? And they just, because you have to. You must believe in something. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what do you mean something? Because the sum of a thing, there's something you're telling me to believe in. What is that thing? And why do I need to when I can know? Why do I? Mm -hmm. and, and this is where they did it by way of subliminal indoctrination, by making evil fair seeming, by telling you the truth in your face, but then saying to you... It's science fiction. It's science fiction. The is two this, words don't go together. No, they don't. Is this what Dr. York called technology? Exactly. That is what technology is. Technology is trick knowledge. So when you say science fiction, your mind becomes combobulated because it's like science That's deals with point. facts. That's a good point. Fiction deals with false things. Mm -hmm. But when you say, and this is why I did um, one of the videos, they then tell you about the cruci fiction, right? There's a word again, <laughs> fiction, I see right research here. fiction, yeah. and this is the crux, because the X, that's yeah. what it really is, the crux, or the cross fiction. fiction. So they gave you a fictional story of someone coming from heaven, who is the son of God, to come and save you, right, and die for your sins, and then gets crucified, then he rose from the death, dead, and he's walking around still, somewhere in the world, people are still believing in this person. And it's such a great story. It's the greatest story ever told. Because they've then implanted images in your mind, what God looks like, what his son looks like, and he did this great thing. But people don't stop and say, okay, why is there still sin in the world? If that was his whole purpose, like when you're using nine mind, nine reasoning, nine ether, you're going to be like, if this is God's son, and his whole purpose of coming to earth is to die at the age of 33, right? Because he has many missing years. Because you, you hear about him when he's a baby, you know, Bethlehem and all that story. Then he disappears because when Herod is looking to kill all the young borns, mm -hmm. they take him to Egypt. You'd never hear about him again until he comes back to the temples around 12, 13 years old. 
and then there's more missing years until he's suddenly 29 going on to 30 then he gets killed on the cross mm -hmm. there's so much missing in the years you're like okay let's let's use nine mind now if he's born to die at the age of 33 because that's what god has set in motion and once god sets something it can't be changed is there any way Herod would have been able to kill him as a baby. No way. Because his whole purpose is to grow up to die for your sins on the cross. That's so that's his, <laughs> that's his fate, right? Right, right? But yet, Herod, who is just a king of a region, which God controls, because God is over the planet and everything, the best God can do is to advise Joseph and Mary to take the child and go and hide in Egypt of all places. Does that make sense, sound right reasoning? It doesn't. And then he comes back and when it's time to do this dying on the cross thing, he starts to, he's scared and he starts to pray and ask if it be possible that this cup be taken up, pa go ahead, pa pass from me. Uh, I've got a question. So I remember I mean, the Bible speaks about uh, Cain killing his brother Abel, mm -hmm. and um, he was cast out of the garden. Yeah, and um, he's scared of the people that were supposed to kill, to kill him. him. Yeah. So my question is, firstly, who were the people that were already here um, before the creation of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel? And I think the second part of my question is, the people that were created is that original man or is that mankind a kind of man? <laughs> Okay, again, um, that's a lot of questions, but let's, let's, let's do it like this. So nine, if we go from, uh, I always, okay, let's say nine, yeah, is the highest where you have, and it's, it's important because when we use English terms, right, it's hard because of the language, but let's say you've got supreme being, mm -hmm. then you've got being, again, all of this is in the book here, mm -hmm. being, then you might have uh, human, being and it's important to differentiate being yeah mm -hmm. human being then you'll have man okay. um a kind of man as you said kind of man or we say mankind mm -hmm. yeah i'll put it here mankind but really you're saying a kind of a man mm -hmm. and you go to beast demon and you can go on to ghouls and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It just goes on, right? Mm -hmm. So you're literally going from the top of having the nine ether, reasoning you're a supreme being. You act and behave a certain way. And as you go down, so when you say man, you're dealing with like man or man mammals. And then you have mankind, a kind of a man, right? And each person can transcend this year and certain beings like up to six e for they can only go up to a certain point mm -hmm. because as i said you've got the, the different levels yeah mm -hmm. so yeah to answer your question about cain and abel that should tell you that was not the beginning of everything because they tell you in the six e for and the these six e for side that god and that's why i asked you who who named god god because this God just pops out of nowhere, right? Because that's like the beginning of everything. They say in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it goes on to taking the dust of the ground to form Adam and taking the rib to form Eve. And these were the two people. They had two children, Cain and Abel. Like you said, Cain kills Abel, but he's afraid when he's banished that people are going to kill him. So you should be saying at that point, sense, it? Yeah. who are these people? Where did they come from? Because that... Genesis is not the beginning of everything. And there were already people here on the planet. And, he, and I think as well, he gets sent to the land of Nod. That's where the 200 fallen and angels is what, reside. You, you're correct, because yeah. they speak Urdu. They speak the Urdu, which goes Nod. back to Ugarit, which is Adam was, his parents were the Watusis. Watusi, yeah. yeah. And that's where they get that whole story from. But then you can go to who are these people that are speaking Ugaric, etc., you're going to end up back to the Hindu beings, you see, because his parents, they had Hindu in them. And then Eve, the yeah. other side, Patahites, which goes back to the Neolithic, the black pygmy people, right, what they call pygmy. But that's what I'm saying. But even that, 
the story can go even further because these beings that came down to this planet mm -hmm. are these extraterrestrials that people are calling angels, gods, Yahweh, mm -hmm. and they're just extraterrestrial beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, there's so much to unpack and that's why we've had these question and answer classes for so long because when you get it clear in your mind, then it's like, okay, now what's next? Because the Bible stories, the Quran, all the biblical, it sounds nice, it's great, boosts your ego, but then you need to move on from that. And that's where we're saying, Wusabat, this is the future. Wusabat is the future. And some, okay, let's go, but Wusabat is not just dealing with one thing, it deals with a culture, yeah? All the people on the planet that have a culture, that have their own way of life, they will survive because it's based on their culture. And so Wusabat is a culture that has like, our own language, our own dress code, mm -hmm. pretty much everything that makes you up as a culture. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like, you cannot be a Hindu if you're an African, no matter what you do. You can put on the clothes, you can try and look like a Hindu, you'll never be a Hindu, mm -hmm. just like a Hindu cannot be you or a Caucasian cannot be you. Mm -hmm. You can try and straighten your hair, light your skin, do everything, change your eye colour to be something that you're not. But by natural nature, you are who you are. Mm -hmm. So the main races on the planet have to respect. But like you said, when you go to unnatural beings or hybrids or things that are created, mm -hmm. like for example, now most people don't know the difference between a real banana and a hybrid banana, hybrid banana or a real grape from mm -hmm. a hybrid grape but this goes back into the question you know people will say oh you know we're all human beings or not well you know we're all, we all bleed red i don't know if that's necessarily true because I, I i give you an example yeah um at one point on this planet there was a species called a neanderthal right and a neanderthal is a, is a type of ape right a type of ape type species yeah and um i think Africans that are not mixed are the only species on the planet that don't have Neanderthal DNA. Right. So now, you see, we're talking science, and this yeah. is what we're about. It's about. Yeah. But you're right. But this yeah. is, again, something that I've broken down many times right. when you're dealing with people who study. Yeah. Did you finish your question? There was a teacher that I came across. I don't want to quote their name, but they, they said that... Um, you, you can if you want. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Mm. There, was a, there was a teacher called uh, Ashiana Dean. Yeah. And um, she mentioned something called a bioregenesis program mm -hmm. where basically fallen souls um, were given the chance to, for lack of a better term, go into rehab, mm -hmm. uh, rehabilitation. And that's what this bioregenesis program was. So it allowed them to come down to this plane yeah. of existence <laughs> and they were supposed to um, mix in with the indigenous people in a good way. And basically, that would allow them to get back their full DNA strands, which would allow them to quote unquote ascend right. or 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 re or re enter the family of man, for lack of a better term. So, she said that when they were allowed to be sent down to this planet, the form that they were given to reincarnate into was the Neanderthal. Right. Okay. Um, You've said a lot. I know. Right. So it's kind of like, who is this person? Um, are they available to be questioned on what they're teaching? Because that's their teachings, mm -hmm. right? And not to say that people can't give information, but there's a lot of she said, she said, she mm -hmm. said, right? And what I would say to you is, like, I didn't know if there was a question on the back of that because mm -hmm. I was trying, I was following you trying to pick the question. If the question is, who are the Neanderthals or yeah. how did they come about? Mm -hmm. We can answer that, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because anthropologists, these are people who study mm -hmm. the evolution and like and when you're dealing with a Neanderthal, mm -hmm. you're dealing with like that would be dealing with the Caucasians. But even when we said the Caucasians, they're different species. Mm -hmm. You see, so when we say Caucasian, we're talking about Caucasus Asian or the those from the Caucasus mountains. Mm -hmm. There were Flugorods before that. You had the Basque, right? And so with anthropologists now, they're explaining because that was the problem where a lot of people thought that all humans came from one strand, which would be, you know, from the Adam and Eve story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But as you start to break down what a, a homo sapien is, you've got, first of all, you would have <laughs> um, genus homo before you get to homo genus, mm -hmm. before you get to homo sapien. Right. But even that now, like I said, is broken down into the three root races where you have the, the homo naledi, the homo habilis now, which will be the African stock. Then you'll have the what they call the Asian stock, which will be the Denisovan mm -hmm. and the homo florensis. Mm -hmm. Then now you've got the Neanderthal or the... Denisovan, Neanderthal, that sort of stock. Right, but the Neanderthal mm -hmm. is the same as what you were just saying, which is dealing with the Caucasian, mm -hmm. yeah? Because mm -hmm. you had the Cro-Magnon and then you had the Neanderthal, that's them. The, yeah, the, the Cro-Magnon came after the Neanderthal, so that's the more humanised version of right. the Neanderthal with the Cro-Magnon. Right, but yeah. what I'm saying is that's dealing with... That's why people yeah, will be like, yeah. we all come from one, but then when you start to look into the, D, the DNA and the genetics, that's not possible. Exactly because you have different strands. So they're actually three different strands. This is the latest information now. So it's very well documented and clear that the Cro-Magnon and the Neanderthal is the Caucasian mm -hmm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. And then you have these other beings that we're talking about, these extraterrestrials that are coming down here and creating hybrids mm -hmm. and mixing with the different races to produce different hybrids. And even within, within each race, you have different species. Okay. Yeah, so... It's, it's a lot now, which is why we have to deal with 94 wolves about actual science mm -hmm. facts to break things down so people are not confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, thanks. thanks. Yeah, no problem. Anytime.